Hello, I'm Gary Cleveland with Cleveland Helicopter Services in Plymouth, Indiana. And I'm glad to bring you another free YouTube video to help you with the helicopter ground school topics that you will need to know as a helicopter student. Today, we will talk about loss of tail rotor effectiveness, or LTE. To describe this, I usually draw a helicopter from the top view. And you'll notice I'm drawing uh, a counterclockwise rotating uh, rotor system helicopter, such as uh, Robinson or an Enstrom, uh, because those are very common uh, helicopters for training. If you happen to be flying a cabri or a rotorway, just keep in mind that uh, everything we talk about today will just be uh, the opposite. And we can recap a little bit of that uh, with another picture towards the end of this video. First we'll talk about the counterclockwise rotating system. This main rotor system is turning counterclockwise. Tail rotor is on the left. It is thrusting towards the tail boom. And it's throwing all its dirty air in this direction. The whole purpose of this tail rotor is to counter the torque. If you lose your tail rotor, what's going to happen is the helicopter is going to yaw to the right because there's nothing pushing against that tail boom. So you get an uncommanded yaw to the right, despite the pilot adding sometimes full left pedal. What can cause us to lose the tail rotor authority in a situation referred to as LTE? Basically, it is the tail rotor getting into a vortex ring state just like the main rotor system would in settling with power or vortex ring state. It builds vortices and begins to operate in dirty air, no longer providing the thrust needed towards the tail boom. Now, certain conditions can uh, lead to this occurring. Uh, we have to be careful when we're hop operating at uh, high gross weight, high density altitudes, we have to be careful about letting the RPM droop. We have to be cautious of fast right pedal turns. And then we need to be careful when we are operating with one of the dangerous winds that we'll soon talk about. Dangerous winds, according to the Helicopter Flying Handbook, would be a quartering front left wind because the main rotor system is throwing dirty air back into this tow rotor. Winds straight into the tow rotor off from the left because it's throwing its own dirty air back in. Or a wind straight up the tail because of weathercock stability. Straight up the tail, if you're not right on the pedals, it could throw your uh, tail to the uh, left, rapidly putting the tail rotor into dirty air, and it could cause it to get into the vortex ring state. Fast right pedal turn, again, whipping it into the dirty air fast. Low RPM. Training helicopters have one power plant operating both the tail rotor and the main rotor system. If you allow the RPM to drop, you will not have the tail rotor authority and it could induce uh, lost tail rotor effectiveness. High gross weight, high density altitude speaks for itself. Uh, we will talk about how density altitude affects performance uh, in another video. 
So I am not saying that you cannot operate, and we do operate with these dangerous winds uh, in hovering operations, in uh, hover taxi operations. You just have to be on the pedals when you have the tailwind. You have to be conscious of the wind that's blowing straight into the tail rotor and be sure and have good pedal control, not let the aircraft start a right yaw which could be uh, amplified as it whips into its own dirty air. And then just be conscious of the fact that when you have this wind coming in from the front left quartering, that if you add something else to the mix, a uh, fast right pedal turn or let the RPMs drop, high gross weight, high density altitude, these things combine and can get you into loss of tow or effectiveness. Now this can happen uh, in, a, in a low speed uh, out of ground effect operation uh, below ETL or it could happen in a hover operation near the ground. So if you get into loss of tow rotor effectiveness, what you'll experience is the aircraft will rapidly yaw to the right despite that you're adding full left pedal. I've actually experienced a loss of tail rotor effectiveness and where it can commonly happen is during the uh, student's process of learning to hover. If they, if they are not right on the pedals and they, they accidentally push too much right pedal and it causes the tail rotor to whip over into that dirty air, next thing you know the CFI is standing on the left pedal and moving the aircraft quickly into clean air uh, to get it under control or as you're coming in after an approach and you're getting close to the runway when you're bringing all the power back in um, if you do allow the rpms to drop in that situation the aircraft uh, could begin to have an uncommanded right yaw if you are not careful if you have a loss of tow rotor effectiveness in a hover you can get rid of the torque Therefore, you do not need the tail rotor anyway. So if the aircraft begins to spin out of control to the right in a hover, and you believe that the tail rotor has gotten into the vortex ring state, full left pedal, the air aircraft is still rotating to the right. If you chop that throttle all the way to detent, it will stop spinning immediately. And this is something that I practiced at the uh, Robinson safety course. And I'm here to tell you the aircraft will stop as soon as you chop the throttle. And then as the aircraft settles, gently cushion the landing by lifting the collective. Basically, you're commencing a hover auto from the uh, out of control right spin. Now, if this happens at an altitude, you cannot do that. You're too high to, to do a hover auto. Uh, let's say uh, you were 100 or 200, 300 feet off the ground hovering and it gets into LTE. Then you just need to fly into clean air. Um, hopefully you don't have an obstacle that prevents you from just pushing forward on the cyclic during the spin and moving the aircraft into clean air. Uh, it will correct the problem very quick once you move into clean air in some direction during the spin. It doesn't take uh, very much movement. Uh, possibly the aircraft is traveling uh, 30 or 40 feet um, as it's coming out of that spin and cleaning up and then the tail rotor begins to work again. So hopefully uh, that helps you. And real quick, let's recap uh, what this would be like in a clockwise rotating system. If you had a clockwise rotating system, your tail rotor would be over here. So your dangerous wind, again, would still be straight up from the rear, but you would have a dangerous wind this way, and you would have a dangerous wind this way because this rotor system would be spinning the opposite way, and it would throw the dirty air here. So the aircraft would spin out of control to the left despite right pedal input because in a clockwise rotating helicopter 
the right pedal adds pitch to the tow rig. And so it's as simple as that. The uh, correction would be the same. If you're near the ground, you would chop the throttle, do a hover auto. If you have altitude, you would fly the aircraft to get out of that dirty air and very quickly that tail rotor would start functioning again. Uh, again, if you like my videos, click the like button, subscribe to the channel, click the bell to be notified. I will continue to add uh, topics to my YouTube channel to help student pilots in hopes that one day you'll come see me to train and you will have a lot of the ground school knowledge in your head from watching my free videos. Please uh, leave comments in the comment section uh, as to what you'd like to see uh, down the road as far as videos. And keep in mind that my videos are not edited. It's just me being me teaching you on the whiteboard uh, as I would if you were right here with me in Plymouth, Indiana. Have a good day.